Good morning time, <clears throat> good evening time, good afternoon time, whatever the case may be in your part of the world. Crisscrossing wires, and I just want to make a real short video about battery building techniques as far as the configuration in which you connect your cells. Okay, now, if you're building a high current battery pack, you cannot use the low current configuration, which is basically just a series circuit, a battery, <laughs> a battery that was uh, built using basically a series circuit meaning there's just one path for the current to flow and what i mean by that is uh i've seen some builders build battery packs and they use a snaking configuration uh whereas though if this was the pack and this is just a little small 6s4p pack 6s4p little teeny small pack but i'm going to use this as a visual now what i mean by the snaking method is when they built their pack uh like i said it was just a basically a series circuit built battery one path of current flow meaning the battery went like this if it if you know if it if it was connected the way they built it the current went like this then through there then around there, then around there, then around there, then around there. From stage to stage. Their battery went from stage to stage with one path of current flow. Okay? You cannot build a pack like that for high current. That's fine if you're building a pack for maybe a little 10 amp or 20 amp controller no problem but if you're building a high current pack you must use a series parallel configuration basically a combination type circuit in your battery build now even looking at this little 6s 4p pack as you can see these cells are connected uh series parallel so Instead of the current flowing through this and in the way that I described to you the other battery uh, people was building where it has that one path that snakes through all of those uh, and you can imagine in a much bigger battery let's say this was like a 20s 10p pack if you built that battery in that snaking configuration that means all the current flow is going now where it goes from stage to stage uh and they're connected they wouldn't have all these little cross sections like this it would just go from this stage to the next stage and just have one nickel strip or however they were connecting them with the wire from the 1s stage to the 2s stage and then from the 2S stage to the 3S stage instead of these series parallel configurations. Now when current flows through this little pack, it flows completely across all of the cells like this. Alright, so the current has more than just one path. It, as you can see, it's moving across all of them evenly current is flowing like this across this pack and that means all the amps are being divided up amongst you know they, they're it's flowing evenly when you build that snaking pattern man you're going to have a high resistance pack for one because you're trying to force a lot of current through one path and no matter how you you know even if you make that one path thick, you think because you're, you're, you know, 
you're beefing it up and making it thick, that's going to help. That is not going to help. It may not burn up, but under load, uh, it's going to be getting hot where it goes from stage to stage. And like I say, that pack, man, the... <sighs> The uh, internal resistance of that battery pack is going to be off the chart. So, as you can see, like I said, this is just a little small pack. But this is how a high current pack should be built. Even if you don't have uh, these strips where they're series parallel like that. Even using a solid strip. If you were, if this was uh, just a solid piece of copper right there, it would be the same thing. Actually, it would be better because you would have more uh, material for current flow. This just happens to be, you know, they, they made it like this. But it could be one solid strip that puts these cells in series with these cells. That's all you're doing. Uh, on this pack, this is the ground. This is the the main ground and current actually flows like you know down through there up down up down up down but at the same time it's it's moving through this battery like that but uh yeah where these are positive on these batteries is connected to the negative on these batteries it, it could be one solid strip of copper going across connecting them and that would give you more current flow because you actually have more than just uh, the amount of copper going from cell to cell. You would have this whole thing would be one solid piece of copper. And uh, it would still be in series. But that is how you build a proper high current battery. Now this battery doesn't have any leads on it, no BMS or anything. I'm just showing you how the cells have to be configured. You have to just you have to have your cells configured so that the current is flowing through the pack and it's you know flowing evenly throughout the pack. You can't use that snake configuration, man. Not on no high current pack. And like I said, you may have built the battery, you may have gotten away with it, or uh, you know, because you're not running high power, you know. If you're not running high power, it's going to work. Don't get me wrong. It will work, but it's not going to work efficiently. And uh, you're not going to be getting the max out of those cells. There's no way, you know, let's, let's just say this was a big battery, 20S10P. You're and uh, you're using model cells, which are 45 amp cells. So at 10p, 450 amps. You're not going to get 450 amps going through one one path. You know, if you did that snake that snake method, there's no way in the world 450 amps is going through one uh, strip of copper or nickel. Or even if you double, triple it up, it just can't. It just can't. It's not enough material there. It's not thick enough gauge wire. You would have to use zero gauge to actually have a low resistive battery. Have a big ass zero gauge wire across there to uh, handle that much current flow. Without it getting hot. Without the impedance being crazy hot. So... I just wanted to say this, you know, it's a, it's very important if you're building your battery, make sure you're using a combination configuration to set up your cells. You know, definitely need multiple paths of current flow. That is the proper way to do a high current pack. Not only that. You also have to be using whatever material you're using, which should be copper if you're trying to get, you know, low resistance with maximum current flow. And it should be a thick piece of copper, at least uh, 0.2 millimeter, maybe 0.3 millimeter, even 0.4. Nice and thick. The thicker the copper, the more current flow and not just the thick, you know, as far as how thick it is on the side. Uh, 
how wide it is, you know, uh, how wide these strips are. You know, the wider the strips, the more current flow. The wider, the thicker, the more material, the more current flow. So, uh, you know. Anyway, that's just a little quick thing I wanted to get out there. Because uh, I see a few people building batteries like that. And, uh, yeah, man, that's, that's something you need to understand. Uh, like I said, you, you, they, they may have worked for a little small low power and everything but when you start pulling some big numbers uh that's not gonna work all right y'all take it easy take care crisscrossing wires deuces i'm out peace